Good morning, everybody, and very welcome to our live surgery today on um, our course about biological dentistry and tomorrow about ceramic implants. Um, we, are, we are very happy with our patient. He's a colleague, dentist as well, and yesterday we did, um, he was sitting in the treatment chair for about nine and a half hours, so the surgery itself was eight and a half hours, it was very, very difficult. So he was what we, what we call a walking cavitation, <laughs> uh, huge cavitations um, all over, and uh, mostly all teeth were ankylotic. So it was a lot of work, extremely difficult. I'm just going to show you what we did yesterday. He's without any swelling, as you can see, and without any pain. Um, so, and he already improved. So on the ceiling of our uh, treatment cabin, there's a vision chart, and already when the metal was removed on Wednesday, he improved one or two lines, and yesterday he improved even more, and he feels absolutely great. Later, I think, when the temporary is adjusted, you're going to join us for a quick statement how it's going. Okay, so what we did yesterday, we started on the left side, removed the wisdom tooth, and as you can see, in the back of the wisdom tooth, so in the area of the second wisdom tooth, there was a huge cavitation. It was um, about something, I'm just going parallel to the wisdom tooth, wait a second, like this, and it was um, about two to two and a half CCM. You can see in the back of the wisdom tooth, there was not even bone above all the fatty degenerative material. So that is something we are asking ourselves, where does this come from? Um, it comes from, of course, there is a tooth germ as well for the second wisdom tooth, because normally we should have a second wisdom tooth as well, and I'm going to talk about cavitation after uh, lunchtime and about the causes we think it's more and more, it's the um, EMF uh, fields. So this tooth we had to remove as well, the number 17, 18, 19, and um, was quite difficult to place an implant because uh, as you can see, the two roots were connected, totally ankylotic. That tooth was not planned, but when we removed the metal, we could see that the nerve was dead, and those of you who have been shadowing yesterday, you saw that the nerve was 90% gone, and since this was all, you see all cavitation bones, so this is all whole. I cleaned all this part of the bone, and the implant is just stable in this area. This is why, um, contrary to our treatment plan, I placed a two-piece implant, and in this area, two-piece implant as well. In the upper, we um, had a huge cavitation in the back of the wisdom tooth. You see, even it's the back of the wisdom tooth. It was a huge cavitation as well, about two CCM. And we placed with an internal lift one implant here, and we placed uh, in the middle between the roots because they were quite uh, nicely disangulated in between. And then we placed another implant in this area of the bicuspid that was quite difficult to remove. So we placed the implant like this and did an internal lift to use this extremely hard bone for what we call bicortical stabilization. As part of our protocol, I'm going to explain that tomorrow in the lower we placed one implant here in the position of the second premolar, then we placed another implant over here. So this was all cavitation, but this part was quite hard, so I had a kind of a bicortical uh, stabilization as well. So I placed a one-piece implant in this area. These two we had to remove as well. This was, um, I don't know what is the English word, uh, they had just removed the pulp but um, haven't done a root canal treatment, we could see in the roots all the nerve was all that. Moved the wisdom tooth and all the cavitation in the back of the wisdom tooth, and it was, I would say, even bigger 
And on the other side, so this was all hollow space, all fat. I think we had a couple of dentists yesterday um, who shadowed, so they saw what's going on, and that was the upper. And as you can see, we had a huge cavitation in this area. There was no wisdom tooth, so there's uh, number two. The huge cavitation, about three ccm, really very, very big. And um, we removed this tooth and placed a balcony implant into this socket without even drilling. We just did an internal lift and screwed the balcony implant in. That's definitely going to work. It's a very nice protocol we developed uh, the balcony implant for, and that is here we placed um, with an internal lift with this beautiful stable bone here. You could imagine that this was all hollow, all cavitation, just very thin bone here. I would never uh, would have been able to get an implant stable. So uh, I used this with an internal lift to get the implant stable. So this is quite a nice cross-section because you see if you would do an uh, external sinus lift, you have to take care about the artery. You can see this is one of the cases where you can see the artery very nicely. So you would do the external sinus lift from here to here. Um, that's just, uh, by the way, um, because if this starts to bleed, you have to, uh, it's very bad if you cut this. So then we removed the bicuspid. <laughs> so this was one of the tubes that was as well not planned. And when we removed the metal on Wednesday, we saw this the nerve was gone. This is something we saw yesterday as well. And we saw we see all the infection inside the sinus here. We see that the tips of the root were this already stuck into the sinus. The, the tooth was completely ankylotic, so this tooth was the worst of all of them we have removed yesterday. This uh, tip of the root I couldn't get out, so I, uh, like you do with a resection, I opened the gum and I made a little window here in the bone to remove the tip and to be 100% safe to not to leave anything inside. Uh, of course, close with the membrane. And this was very difficult to remove the tip. And there was a high risk that it would flip into the sinus, what would mean that we would have to open here and to get the tip out. So I removed some bone in the back over here and flipped the tip of the root in this direction. So we're able to remove it without any problem. So since all the teeth were so ankylotic, I decided yesterday that I would already remove <coughs> the, um, uh, the root canal treated teeth um, number six, seven, and eight uh, to not to lose too much time today with, um, with oncologic teeth. I think it was a good idea. So the teeth are already gone, so we just have to place the implants. We see it's not a easy case because it's a quite big root. This was very much to the buccal side and I just I pulverized the root. So we kept all the buccal bone. And um, my idea is that we are going to place an implant, of course, in the middle of the bone like this. So it will be a 14, maybe even with an internal lift to get it even more stable. This is very nice and easy quite short root, and there we're going to place, I think, a 40 millimeter implant, and the, where is the next tooth here? And this one, we are going to, let me see. Okay, so we see the root was not so long. It was very difficult to remove anyway. We are going to place a 14 millimeter implant or 17, we will see. We just, uh, we've in the meantime, we have um, <coughs> produced some 70 millimeter implants, so we could, uh, in cases where we can't get the immediate implant stable by the width, we could get it stable by the length, so we will see. So, um, since we always, the most difficult tools, in my opinion, is the canine. So, because the canine, we have to get it, um, in, more inside the curve, and 
So that is why I'm going to start with the middle incisor and the lateral incisor to um, get as much space as possible for the canine so we could move with the canine a little bit to the inside and get a safe um, situation. Okay, that's the um, result of yesterday. You see that was the immediate implant. We're uh, close to the nerve, but Du fühlst alles, gell? Alles gut, oder? Keine? Okay, all the sensation is there, so we didn't touch the nerve. That was the one with the huge cavitation, but with some stable bone over here. And you see the, the roots were connected, like here and here, so I angled a little bit more to the mesial, the tip, the apical part of the implant to get it stable. That was internal lift, um, immediate implant in the middle of the three roots. That was with an internal lift. That's more to the palate, that is why it's a little bit, looks a little bit like angulated on the panoramic. The same with this tooth, internal lift, and that is the palate root with an internal lift. So, and we see all the bone here has removed, has been removed, huge cavitations. Now we're going to place the three implants over here. Okay. Good, perfect. So, let's start. Ja, das ist ganz normal durch den internen Lift. Ist schon eine kleine Verletzung auch. Also hier eine bewusste kleine Verletzung, weil man den Knochen ein bisschen puncht. So, the patient was just um, saying that he had a little bit of bleeding from the nose in the night. That's totally normal because uh, we've done, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six internal lifts. And um, so with the internal lift, you kind of punch the bone and then you lift it upwards without ripping the Schneiderian membrane. Macht ein bisschen fett auf die Lippen. And um, you could see on the cross-section that the um, anatomy of the sinus was great because it's more, it was a kind of a U-shaped um, uh, sinus. And in a U-shaped sinus, it's very easy to remove all the tension. And on the other hand, when you build, when you're going to build a flap, you, uh, and it's easy to build the flap with the chinjiwa, then it's easy to build a flap with the, um, uh, with the Schneider membrane as well. But sometimes the flap is extremely attached to the bone. In those cases, you know, you have to be very, very careful. And I wouldn't try to lift more than one and a half to maximum two millimeters. But if it's like in his case, very easy to remove the, um, uh, to, to open the flap and it's not very much attached to the um, bone. <coughs> and you know it's going to be easy with the sinus lift as well. Um, haben wir einen Splint, also quasi ein Formteil. Ja, ich brauche nur das Formteil. Sie steht braucht der harte Paul dann. Mhm. Ah, immer noch? Ah, okay. Okay, gut. Nee, wir machen, machen nur ein bisschen was dran. Ja. Mhm. So, the number three is still sensitive. So, we're going to inject a few more drops to be otherwise... With the suction, the patient is going to feel something. And <coughs> so, in a moment, before we start, we'll have a look. Okay. Not like this, in a few seconds. So. That's the situation where we 
place the temporary on this implant, on this implant, and that is the implant in the very back. So, and we see this implant and the other one is a little bit hidden underneath the gum, but we see there's no tension since we did apical mattress sutures. And so the temporaries will be finally adjusted to today. So there's another implant over here. We can see that here. Okay, very good. And those two implants are connect, um, connected with the temporary here. This will be perfectly adjusted and then glued with the um, with acid etching technique. This is the balcony implant in the very back in the buckle, uh, in the pallet root. This was, is a, I think, an oval shaped implant, yes. What we placed, yeah. as you see, that's an oval shaped implant. What we placed um, into the area of the second premolar, and this one is a balcony, 3.8 balcony implant. Okay, you see that? Very nice. So we, even it's a 3.8 millimeter, we got the emergence profile of five to six millimeters. Okay, let's start. I mean, this is a huge surgery, and so it, it would have been maybe 20 more minutes yesterday evening, but we had agreed that we are going to do these three implants in the live surgery today, and otherwise you would already we would have placed the implants. And the huge benefit for the patient is it's he's without swelling, he's without pain. Of course, he has to rest for the coming days. Um, but in a few minutes, it's all over. It's done. So um, that is much more motivating for the patient than if they would have two or four appointments. Geht es so? Hm? Ja, oder willst du ohne machen? Lass mal ohne. Mhm. Ich glaube, es ist angenehmer. Oder geht, gell? Mhm. Geht ohne. Mhm. Okay. So. Mhm. Good, okay. So, perfect. Then mal mit dem Sauger. Werden wir mal hier. So, now we are going to <coughs> clean the socket. As I was saying before, we are going to start with the number eight, the middle incisor. I always, I love this section system because you could put the thin tip on top and then we'll have a perfect U inside. Okay, and we've got the so with this with splint we can get a feeling where the implant is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So this brauchen wir nicht mehr, gell? Dann kann ich das what I do quite often, that's my way of navigation. So I'm using that to get an idea where the implant should be placed. Dann kannst du mal auf die Position 1-1 gehen. Okay. Good. Okay. So we have to um, go into the position of the root, and then we have to go up maybe a third of the length and angle about eight to ten degrees. Mm -hmm. 
So, let's see Ms. Auger. Okay, now we see we are in a perfect position. Perfectly in the middle of the bone. And then we are switching for the pilot drill. And Okay, can you raise the bild aufrufen? Mm -hmm. So, this is 8, 11, 14. The length, what is written on the package, so you know uh, how long is the thread, and it's where the thread of the implant ends. There's another always three millimeters to the prosthetic plateau. So I'm not interested into the bone level so much. So since I'm planning a 40 millimeter implant, I'm going to drill 17 on prosthetic level. That means on tissue level. So you will see that in a second. And always try to move a little bit to the pellet and try to create um, a little space <coughs> on the facial side because we've learned by experience over thousands and thousands of immediate implants, especially in the aesthetic area, that if you create a little space in the area, you're going to get some extra tissue. It's going to grow upwards. So, look at this. 100% perfect. Couldn't be better. We're 100% inside my plant position. Okay. And I'm now going for 14, but I still would have the option to go. That is the bone class 2 drill. So you see, that is bone class 4, 3, 2, 1. Immediate implants are 95% bone class 2. I first used the drill 3.8, but my plan is to place a 4.6. So now I'm using the 4.6 bone class 2. So that is the first and only drilling kit and drilling system um, where you go with different drills for different bone classes, what makes totally sense. Because if you would drill into soft wood or hardwood or into metal or concrete, you would as well use different drills, of course, and different screws. And that is our concept as well. <coughs> so my plan is to place a one-piece one implant. I'm going to scratch a little bit on the pellet. So all of the pressure goes to the pellet, just scratching a little bit on this side. And we see we're creating some space on the buckle. Should be no tension on the buckle. So I'm still scratching on the pellet side. Okay. Now we are going to have a look into the sockets. And I still would have the option of a 4.6 by 17. If I would have the feeling that I would <coughs> that I wouldn't be able to get it stable. No, but we see that's a beautiful, nice hole, and you see it's all bone, beautiful. 46-14, 1.1. So we're going to clean it. And we're going to remove all the soft tissue over there. So, 
And there we see with the incredibly aggressive threat in the lower part of the implant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so easy to get the implant in the right position. I mean, this is anyway that's an easy situation and. So our implant is built for creating all the stability in the l in the apical part of the implant and in the upper part of the implant it's all about stability of the implant itself and um, soft tissue connection and no compression onto the cortical bone because the cortical bone is um, has got a very poor blood support. So if you put pressure onto the cortical bone, you're going to lose it. That's according to Mamoto's law. If you put pressure on any tissue, if it's your liver, if it's your brain, if it's the pulp, if it's the bone, you're going to lose the tissue. I'm going to use the long. We've got a short and a long insertion tool. I'm going to use the long one because the longer the drill, if you saw that I used the extension as well, the longer the drill, the longer the tool, the easier to understand the angle. So now we see I'm going to over angle it a little bit until I could feel that it's in the right place. Okay, it's in the right place. Now I'm going to straighten it up. So with this implant, I took very much care that I would be not to move too much to the distal side to leave enough space for the click 35. You see, what you see is what you get. If you follow the drilling protocol, it will stop by its own exactly at 35. Okay, we see 100% perfect. I see that couldn't be better. So, dann mal auf den Dreier gehen. Now we are going to have a look at the canine. I mean, this is a delayed implant of about 12 to 14 hours. What I would never do is a delayed implant six hours, something like this makes absolutely no sense because you're going to lose bone and all the bone growing activity is gone. And with our surface and our implant shape, we're able to place implants in any situation. Okay, also wir bohren auf 11, denke ich. Wir müssen ein bisschen nach, neige ihn mal ein bisschen parallel zum Zweier. <coughs> so, noch ein bisschen, noch ein bisschen, noch ein bisschen. Okay, mm -hmm, gut. Yeah, okay. So, we should... As we can see, we should angle it a little bit to the lateral incisor. 
And that is why it's so important that you use the extension. It's much easier to understand the um, position. And we should move to the pallet side. So, okay, I would say, yes, you see, that is different, totally different to where the um, tip of the root was, because that was a little bit angled to the distal and very much in the the tip of the root very much in the facial area. So now this is 14. So I've now drilled for 11 millimeters just to be on the safe side. We are going to check for the position. And we see absolutely perfect. Oh, we can see that. So like this. It's wonderful. Yeah. So we go maybe a little bit more this direction, just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. And I'm going to yeah, going to show you now the our drilling hole, you see the socket is there. But my drilling hole is there in the fresh bone, more to the inside. It's always, that is the most dangerous tooth. The canine, you have always tried to go inside the curve. That is like what you do exactly the same with your car. You go with high speed in a curve. You try to go more inside. You see, I'm over angle and now I'm Straightening it up. And now I can feel the um, hard, stable nasal floor. So, I'm going to have a quick check with the suction. Mm -hmm. Look at this beautiful hole. It's all bone and has nothing to do with the um, socket of the root. Now we're just to be on the safe side. It could be that there's still bone, but it could be that um, we're already close to the nasal floor. That is why we are going to do an internal lift in this area as well. Sorry for that, Harald. <laughs> so, but with that we are on the safe side. So, uh, what I recommend is the Summers Osteotome Kit. Those are five instruments. So when you buy the set, take this one and the biggest one and just throw them away. <laughs> <laughs> and this is for the 3.8, this is for the 4.6, and this is for the... Um, 5.4, and you see it fits perfect. So this is 8 millimeter, 11 millimeter, 40 millimeter. It's a very nice kit. So now we're going to have a look at the nasal floor. Yeah, okay, we can see the lift, but we see the bone is still connected through the nasal membrane. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then 46, 14, kit can weg. Genau, mhm. 
So now we're going to remove the soft tissue. Okay, mm -hmm. since the canine always is the most important tooth and implant in the whole mouth and why? Because it's has got the longest root we've got uh, and this is the only tooth or the only meridian or the only tooth which has got his own meridian so we have to place an implant always in the canine area to activate the meridian it's the liver meridian so you should never skip <coughs> the canine otherwise <coughs> the detox will be compromised and I've now first placed the canine after the middle incisor why because there would be not enough space for the lateral incisor I would skip the lateral incisor the meridian would be already activated by the middle incisor and now I'm still I could decide if I'm going for a 3.8 or a 3.2 millimeter implant that is why I first placed the canine. So that is so important that we, before we do any surgery, we should sit down, what I do every single morning, even after 30 years. And I've placed more than 32,000 implants, 12,000 titanium, more than 20,000. So Konya, I still, I sit down every morning having a look at my treatment plan of the all-in-one case and I'm already kind of mentally performing the surgery for about five to ten minutes that saves me then later hours and a lot of failures and complications so that is that I'm now I'm doing the surgery already the second time because I already did it this morning so I overangle it, you can see that, because it's now so important that we get the excess. And now I'm starting to straighten it up, since I can feel that we're in. The root was so big, so I didn't have to use the countersink. And we see we are now on the highest point of the Chinjiwa. And now let's go for the mill incisor. Mm -hmm. So as we can see, in his case, we, have, we should have enough space for the middle incisor. So, we see the root, where the root was. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now... Okay. I'm just going exactly in the middle of the two teeth. Mm -hmm. So I'm just cleaning that a little bit, so perfect. Got a better view. Okay.
Okay. And let's have a look inside. And we see that's absolutely perfect. About in the middle of the socket and angulation of about 15 degrees. Then, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So, 40 millimeter. So, let's have a look at the angulation first, and then let's decide if we're going to go for. Um, 3.2 or 3.8 implant. Look at this, absolutely perfect. It's wonderful. And now I'm going to use this. That's the what we call the small counter or the counter for um, <coughs> bone class four. And if you put that in between, what we see is we've got one millimeter or even a little bit more on both sides. So that means we're definitely going for a 3.8 millimeter implant. Okay, 3.8 by 14, 3.8 by 14. Counter, the counter we are scratching to the pallet. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look. Inside, okay, look at this, what a beautiful drilling cavity in the middle of the jawbone, it's all bone, no perforation, but in case you would perforate to the pellet, absolutely no problem. Better you perforate to the pellet because there you've got very thick soft tissue, and then you would perforate to the buccal side, facial side. Okay, it's all clean. Or sewn. for about 20 seconds, 20 to 30 seconds. If it's highly inflamed like with pus, then we go for two minutes, two and a half minutes. So ceramic implants, the biology is totally different than to titanium. Titanium you would never place in a inflamed area because it could explode. So cornea we place in all areas, even there is pus, inflammation, everything. Of course, we clean all at the same time. You see an over angle first, and then we place the implant. There is never any complication, but just if you follow the protocol, Ja, oder funktioniert es gerade? Wenn es funktioniert, dann ja, sonst. So, we see, it's so perfect. We're, of course, it's better with the third implant because we're perfectly stabilizing the papilla. So. 
and click it stops exactly at 35 newton centimeters exactly at the perfect level and we are now going i hope it works because we had some problems <laughs> last days ah, okay so Barrier test, minus 5.4. Very good. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you have to calibrate after each measurement. So I have to come from the horizontal. Minus 4.4. You have to get something around 12 when you calibrate, otherwise there's something wrong. So now that we can hear the sound is wrong, it's not. I have to come a little bit more from the horizontal side, like this. Minus 6.1. Und die anderen messen wir auch noch, die anderen zwei. So that was huge cavitation underneath, so it's just a bicortical stabilization, but you see we still have minus 4.6, that's just incredible. But this stability just comes from the bony sinus floor, from the B cortical stabilization. Mm, it doesn't work. No, we have to do it again. <coughs> Minus 5.4 even. So in this case, we had, you could see it on the CT scan, we had B1, bitte. Mm -hmm. We had um, extremely stable um, bony sinus floor, and there comes all the stability from. In this eye, you could never overdo it, but you should take care. But we have already implemented it into the drilling system into the drills that you if you follow the protocol you can't destroy the cortical bone cortical bone is that bone and you should never put any compression on this bone einen frischen wenn es geht um things mm -hmm. I. now i'm just going to do the preparation and then we are done and paul is going to work on a beautiful nice temporary we can see now on the screen, if you look from above, it's all very nice and beautiful. And as we can see, if we put the splint on top, all the implants are 100% in the place where they are supposed to be. Look at this. Wait a second, we're not in the place yet. Where is it here? Okay, now. Okay, look at this. From this side, it's just perfect. And from this side, it's just perfect. And if we let the patient close, mal schließen bitte. Uh, we see there is enough space. No, nothing to worry about. Okay, perfect. Now we are going to shape the post like you would do that with a regular tools or with an already healed implant. The material of the STS implant, you're allowed to shape it with a red ring diamond, very soft with all the water cooling.
So you see that's an absolutely safe procedure, absolutely predictable. Even we do the, as you can see in his case, really difficult cases. And 90% are immediate implants and about 80% are with immediate temporizing. Our success rate over the last three years is here yeah, the Swiss Bars Clinic is 98.5%. I think that's amazing. And you see it's very easy, very reliable because the threat is so great that you could trust 100% your implant as well. This is an implant which will never ever spin. The thread is so aggressive that it will never spin. That is something you're always afraid in all other implant systems. That if the bone is weak, it could spin. And if it spins, it's over. You have to go for a longer or wider implant, what is not always possible. You see I'm now going exactly on tissue level. And the one piece implant, because we have got such a wide collar, you could angle up to 45 degrees. So, especially if you need to change the angle. So that is now, I've, as you can see, I've changed the angle, let's say about 15 degrees, something like that. But it's still such incredible, stable post course as well because it's one piece. So let's check the angulation because this has to be in the same angulation than the neighboring T's and we see it all maybe a little bit lateral incisor. Ganz kleines bisschen noch hier. And then it's perfect. Just perfect. You see, all in the same angle, 100%. Then we are going to inject some brocane and some traumeal and dexamethasone in this area. You can see there is no swelling, not in the face, nothing. We had a close to nine hour surgery yesterday. We have removed how many teeth? I think eight, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Have you seen them in front? <laughs> so not even the patient knows. <laughs> 15? 15, so I removed 15 teeth, and no, I don't think so. Here was one in Palukken, schau mal nach, I think 12. 
an ein paar Brückenglieder. I think it was 12. So and we've placed yeah, but I think we have placed 15 implants and he's going to receive a beautiful temporary you can see already this was quite nice, but we're going to work on that and make it absolutely perfect and beautiful. So it's going to be with nice, beautiful temporaries, completely metal free, all done, not in one day, but in one stay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs>